Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now today I've got in front of me one of the Necromunda Orlock Gangers. These are one of the new plastic rangers and they're pretty cool. I really like how these guys look since the redesign. They used to be a little bit sort of bikers and bandanas, but they've kept that original sort of feel while updating the look into something a little bit more sort of modern grimdark. Now these guys are not difficult at all to paint. As a matter of fact, you'll see they're probably one of the easier gangs in Necromunda to get on the table. But with just a couple of little things, you can make them stand out that bit more. Now you might also notice this guy is a little bit shinier than how my guys normally come out, and that's because I've given him quite a deliberate varnish. Necromunda figures, by virtue of how the game plays, spend a lot of time being knocked over, laid on their side and what have you, so while ordinarily you don't have to worry too much about paint coming off of a plastic miniature, I figure the varnish can't hurt, so that's why that little bit of shininess to him. At any rate, it's not too difficult to paint these guys at all, so let's get a quick look at the paints I'm going to use to start off. So I've gone ahead and given him a quick spray of Chaos Black, and because I'm going to use that as the basis for most of the colours on him, I've gone ahead and made sure that it's you know nice and even, so once that first thin coat was dry, I went back and just you know gave it another quick spray in a couple of spots to make sure that nothing was going to get missed on this. First thing we're going to do after that is get out the Dark Reaper. And I'm actually going to dry brush this over most of the model. Um, what we're going to use this for is to break up some of the sort of shape of the leather gear that he's wearing. So because he's got quite a lot of black kit, like his trousers, his jacket, his boots, we're going to quickly do Dark Reaper. Now you can get a little bit more involved in this if you'd like, but this is going to be a nice easy way to get him onto the table and just break up some of that detail without it looking so flat. Now after that, we're going to go ahead and we're going to use Burnt Red. Now my guys, the Iron Stalkers, they are not quite the same as the ones on the box, as you've seen. And I really like that super dark, sort of rusted, beaten iron look to them. It's pretty easy if you want to pick a different colour scheme for your Orlocks. Just think of stuff that's going to look like older metal. So I'm going to use Burnt Red here. This is a nice old Vallejo colour. If you wanted to stick to Citadel stuff, you could swap in for Corn Red here, for example. And if you wanted to paint them like they are on the box, it'd be as simple as just swap in here and use the Fang instead for that sort of deeper blue colour. At any rate, once we've got that colour on for all of his clothing, we're going to use Rhinox Hide and base coat all of the leather kit. So he's got a few straps and buckles, and most of these Orlock guys have got like a, a boxy sort of thing on their back as well. Any cloth details and stuff like that, I'm going to quickly touch up Mechanicus Standard Grey, so the little tabard thing that they've got swaying around on them, and I'm going to quickly do in his bandana too. I'm probably going to need to touch up that bandana later on, but it doesn't hurt to get a base colour on it now. Then we're going to do all of the metallic colours, and that's going to be starting off with Iron Breaker rather than uh, Lead Belcher, because the slightly brighter finish this will give us will really help contrast with all of the other darker colours that we're going to use. Then to add a little bit more warmth to the model, being as, you know, it's going to be quite a dark palette. Some of those areas I'm going to go over with Balthazar Gold. And then we're going to wash all of that in non-oil. Okay, nice and simple start. The reason why I'm not going to do the skin yet is because we're going to put this non-oil on. And I, I don't want it to be quite that dark. Now this will look quite bright first going on the model. Okay, but have some faith because Dark Reaper darkens down quite a bit <laughs> once it's actually had a chance to settle. Especially once we put that Null Oil wash over the top of it, it's you know almost going to disappear. All this is doing is just breaking up some of that flat black and giving us a little bit more sort of interest visually that we can work on later, if we want to. But all this is is just quickly blatten around. I mean, you can do the whole model like this. It honestly doesn't matter. Make sure you're just getting anywhere that is going to be leather though, so paying attention to his jacket, boots and trousers in particular. Now as a quick note, if you're looking for a way to get these guys done really, really quickly, then get yourself some Necron compound and a little bit of a smaller dry brush, and just lightly flick along the edges of his gun now. What you'll find is it won't give you quite as precise a finish, but it does have a nice sort of beaten look to it. Uh, you will need to tidy up a couple of smaller areas, like along the back of his fingers and what have you, but as far as just getting guys on the table, it's actually not a bad way of just very quickly polishing off those weapons. And with that out of the way, I've got my small base brush and that nice burnt red. And you see how easy this goes on. This is a really nice colour. 
I might need to do a second thin coat of this, but whatever the case, just get in now and paint your models, t-shirt, jacket, <laughs> whatever it is you want to call it. And once that's done, you can head down to your medium layer brush, get your Rhinox hide, and start painting in any of these leather details. Now take your time with this because you want this to be fairly tidy, and if you need to, you can flip your model around to reach some of those harder to reach areas. Now at the same time, while I had that Rhinox hide out, I very quickly went over his hair too. Just this particular model I'm going to do him with dark brown hair, so it doesn't hurt to get that out of the way now. At any rate, head on now to your Mechanicus Standard Grey, and any of these cloth areas you want to do, like his little tabard thing, uh, bandanas, anywhere that you want to add your gang sort of second colour. Get in there now and start painting that on. Now with this iron breaker, you'll find that your small base brush will get most of this done for you. Like I said, we want to start with a slightly brighter sort of metallic color than we normally would. In some places though, you're going to want to swap down to your small layer brush, because there are a few things like buckles and little parts of metal on the jacket, for example, that you don't want to go overboard on. Now with all of that silver base coated, I've got here my Balthazar gold, and I'm just going to do a couple of little areas over the top, just to add a bit of visual interest. Now you can do as much of this as you like. Um, I'm not going to do very much, just a little bit to sort of break up some of these areas of silver and introduce a little more warmth in lieu of using something like yellow, for example. Now once those are dry, grab your shade brush and your non oil. Now you could, if you wanted to, use Agrax Earthshade here. <laughs> but I want quite a lot of contrast. I really want to bring these colors down quite a bit. So what I'm going to do is head run now and we're going to coat the whole model in non-oil. All of those areas that we've already painted, just go nuts with this stuff. Now doesn't that look better? We can see how it's brought down all of those really bright metals and it's introduced a heck of a lot of shading too. Particularly around the leather on the jacket, we can see it's darkened down that Dark Reaper a fair bit, so that there's a little bit more visual interest in all of those leather areas. Seeing too on the uh, burnt red that we used, it looks pretty cool for those shaded areas. So what we're going to do now, first step, is get the skin on them. And for that we're going to start with Bugman's Glow. Now with this, you might find this is probably the part that takes the longest, because we want to be quite careful going back over these areas of skin. Anywhere that we've already painted, if we can avoid it, try not to get any of the skin tone on, because it'll be a little bit challenging to fix it up. Whatever the case now, what you want to do is get that Bugman's Glow onto any of the exposed areas of skin, and it might need a second thin coat over the top. Now with the second coat of Bugman's Glow applied, I'm actually going to go straight to my Cadian Flesh Tone. I have got the old Reichland Flesh Shade waiting for me, but I'm going to do that after this step to bring these two colors together. So what I'm going to do now is paint in most of the skin with this stuff, not worrying too much if I hit any of the facial hair along the way, because we'll fix that up in a second. <laughs> but when I've come to do all of this, we'll use that wash as a way to sort of bring these two colors a little bit closer together. So I've gone in there with my Cadian Flesh Tone, Probably a little bit more than I usually would, if I'm honest. <laughs> this is the problem with trying to paint without your glasses on, if you need them. At any rate, I then tidied up with a little bit of Rhinox hide, his moustache, and what I've got now is my Reichland Flesh Shade. Now I'm going to apply this with a medium layer brush, because I want a fair chunk of control over where it's going. At any rate, all I want to do now is get it all over his skin, and try and make sure that it's going to pull in any recesses where I want to accentuate the shape of his face. So along the hollow of his cheek, for example, but particularly under eyes, in his ears, that sort of area. Don't forget, any exposed areas of skin too, let's get a quick splash of this on there as well, just to make sure that all of his skin color is going to be the same tone. Now you may notice once that's dry, that's a little bit more sort of orangey skin tone than I would normally go for. But I kind of like it for these guys, and I think it really works if you want a slightly sort of more, I guess, dingy looking uh, thing. At any rate, what we get in now is a little bit of Kislev Flesh, and just use that to 
finish off the skin, highlighting any areas that we really want to bring attention to. So along cheekbones, face, there we go, um, along the back of some of these more prominent muscle groups and what have you, just anywhere that you want to bring a nice hard edge to where you imagine the light would catch. You can see I've clipped the edge of its sleeve there, but that's not a big problem because we're actually about to highlight that. <laughs> now I've got here my corn red. Now whether you use this as the base coat for his uh, jacket or not, now's the time after a bit of non oil you can get back on there and start adding a little bit more red back into the color scheme. So just avoiding any of the deepest recesses where that shade's settled, what you want to do now is go around and add in a little bit of red to really make his jacket stand out some. This is a little bit more difficult to do in front of the camera, but uh, I'm sure you'll be able to see where the shade has settled and we want to leave that nice deep shading intact. Now you could leave that there, that looks quite nice I think, but honestly we've only got like 10 of these guys to paint for a gang, so why not take a little bit more time and really make them stand out. So I've got here some Wazdaka Red, and what I'm going to do is use this to just do a very edge highlight along the most extreme folds in his clothing. Now this can be a little bit time consuming, and it might seem a little challenging at first, but whatever the case, just keep a point on your brush. And remember, too little of this is going to look better than too much. So have a bit of an experiment, play around with it, and see what you like the look of. Now with his skin and his clothing done, it's time to move on and we'll do the leather areas. Now ordinarily I would paint these a little bit more sort of warm and red tone, but because I've got that going on for the jacket, I'm going to use Gawthor Brown as quite a sharp highlight on these leather areas. You might find something like Doomball works better if you're uh, using the, I guess, more sort of normal color scheme. Uh, but all I want to do is just bring out the edges of these without adding any more sort of red to the color palette. So it's getting in there now and using Gawthor Brown as my extreme highlight on these leather areas. Then we're going to go up to Dawnstone and do any of the gray areas. We'll get a little bit of Liberator Gold to do any of the brassy details. And then we'll get a little bit of Stormhost Silver just to finish off the backs of any of these really sort of prominent metal areas. And any little buckles or anything that you've got on the model, this would be a good spot to cruise around now and just make sure they got a little bit of shine to them. Nice and simple. From there, there's one last step. Now this is completely optional. You might remember we started off with a dry brush of Dark Reaper on his jacket. Now, get yourself a little bit of Thunderhawk Blue, and you can use this just to edge in any of the extreme edges of that jacket and introduce a little bit more blue back into the color scheme without being totally overwhelming. Be sparing with this, but it will help introduce just a little bit more sort of, I guess, what's the word? Contrast. There we go. Then with those last couple of highlights, our Orlok Ganger is complete. Now you could spend forever on these guys, and I do recommend enjoying yourself, have a bit of fun, really do spend the time painting them. But as far as the basics go to get these guys fighting in the underhive, you don't have to go insane, you know? <laughs> Just the old simple base coat wash and then a highlight or two really helps pop these guys off. I mean, Orlok in particular, these are such a cool old design that have been updated, and I really think they, they benefit from a bit more time spent on them. So you might spend a little bit more time on the weapon, for example, but that's up to you. You can decide what you'd like to do. From here, I'm going to finish off his base, get a couple of photos, but, you know, that's that guy painted. So as ever, guys, you can drop a comment down below, or you can get in touch either on Facebook or over on Twitter. Thank you very much for your time. You enjoy the rest of your day.